So it's my pleasure to introduce Elizabeth Martinez Podolsky. She is originally from South Texas and has lived in Iowa for a little more than a decade. So she feels pretty Iowan, she says. Uh, as a multicultural li a liaison officer and MLO for the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences at Iowa State, uh, Elizabeth supports and advocates for undergraduate multicultural student populations by using asset-based pedagogies with a focus on professional development. In addition to being an MLO, uh, Elizabeth is a doctoral student in the higher education program at Iowa State, a proud Chicano judía, a partner to Joseph the civil engineer, and a mother of three lively children. That was great, thank you. <laughs> thank you everyone. I know we're the last presentation before we go to lunch, so um, thank you for being patient enough to wait till our presentation. So I'm Elizabeth Martinez Podolsky. I work with our students in the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. And so I brought some amazing student leaders in the college. If some of you have been keeping up just with some of the work that's been done recently um, in, at Iowa State, but also um, as we transitioned our dean, our former dean to president, um, Madam President Winterstein, um, really started with cultivating a space in our uh, college called the Lead It Collective. And I'll have our students introduce themselves, talk a little bit about that. Hello, my name is Yabelis Marin Castro. I'm a sophomore in animal ecology, and I'm also a member of the LEADIT Collective, as Ms. Elizabeth said already. So LEADIT stands for uh, Leaders Enhancing Agriculture, Diversity, Inclusion, and Trust. And we are a program under the Dean's Office in the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, um, directed by Ms. Elizabeth and also Dr. Cooper. And in this program, we, like the students, we learn how to acknowledge, embrace, and implement values of diversity, multiculturalism, social justice, and intercultural competency in our academic, professional, and personal development. I assume, personally, I have fallen in love with this program because it has helped me understand the diversity that we find within each own individual and just helped me promote this um, like a welcoming environment at ISU. Hello, I'm Lily Trevino, and I'm also a very proud leader. Um, the CALS organization is so important, because not only are we educating ourselves by reading a book called Is Everyone Really Equal by Sensoy and Angelo, I really recommend it. And we use those skills and we apply it by doing presentations just like this and acknowledging multiculturalism and the value. Great. So um, as I took this position a few years ago, um, having a background in higher ed, I thought about, oh my goodness, you know, I don't have a connection to agriculture. Um, and for me, it was really a process of uncovering that and demystifying this to say, what is my deeper connection? As I did my own research, and as I heard the narratives of many of the students in the College of Ag, I began to realize something. Many of them not only have a deep connection, but they innately know this science, right? Like these are the sciences that they are connected to. And so, um, you know, getting to find out a little bit about my own history um, and my deeper connection being a Chicana from South Texas, I realized that my roots go a lot deeper. So um, I quote um, a quote by Ellie Weisel, who is an educator uh, who passed away a few years ago, also a Holocaust survivor, who talks about an important concept called memory. And memory um, is something that's inherited, right? And it's inherent. So when as I began to talk to many of our students in the college, I realized not only did they understand the science, but something felt familiar to them, right? They understood that the soil is living before the textbook told them, right? They understood that it, there's an important concept in understanding the dignity of animals um, and providing that. Um, as many of them worked with uh, people in the industry, right? Many of them saw their tias and tios on those lines cutting that meat and wanted to care about their safety a little bit more. So these students had an inherent connection to many of these sciences, and I say it's through memory. Um, so in Mexican Chicano culture, we have a concept called susto. And susto uh, is a concept of not startling or upsetting a pregnant woman. We believe that doing this will pass uh, down the, the, you know, the trauma to the child. And so we believe that this concept um, is, passes through generations, right? White science now has told us that this concept is called epigenetics. So not only do we pass down trauma, but we also pass down the inherent knowledge that we know, the indigenous knowledge, and the things that we um, seek to teach um, our, our children as well, right? So when students would come up to me and say, I don't have a lot of experience in, in agriculture, like, 
all my friends have done many internships, they've done study abroad, and I'm thinking, y you, you worked on your dad's farm in Mexico, how is that not relevant? You know, you translate for your parents, right? You translate for your community, that's community service, right? Let's talk about what these skills really mean. And so um, this was my quest as a, the college MLO, but also with the work of our students here in the Lead It Collective, was to really not just um, uncover some of these connections, but to reclaim them, right? Many of the sciences, many of the areas in STEM um, are so deeply rooted in concepts that are native to us. Our students didn't need to come to Iowa State to be scientists, they are scientists, right? And so reminding them of that reclamation of knowledge. And here we have a few images just to kind of show that global reclamation and even some local reclamation, right? Um, some of our scientific concepts coming from the east with our medicines, right? We have indigenous farming techniques um, that have also been uh, a part of the narrative. Um, we have uh, young emancipated black men, uh, black um, soldiers, buffalo soldiers, who helped with the preservation in the natural park systems in the United States, right? And we have today queer farming, which queer um, and queer people have already uh, looked at biological concepts and remind us that binary is not scientific. <laughs> so um, getting us to think further about our sciences. And so we, um, we have an uh, obligation to remind our students, right? You have a deep connection to the sciences. You don't need to go through a four-year program. It will help. But know that you're already a scientist the moment you enter into the classroom. And know that you have an obligation to reclaim some of those sciences and find your own connection in the sciences that you learn, whether it's a human science and having the dignity to interview people, right? Um, whether it's a, STEM, a heart of STEM science and remembering that your people might have founded important concepts like aquaponics or invented things like chocolate, right? So um, it, it's, it's an important concept in who we are. Um, and so for me, again, that reclamation of knowledge was important and crucial for me to understand not just how to work with my students, but also find a connection in the sciences. And I learned, right, and I have mommy and papi down there who are um, uh, also kind of the distributors of this knowledge from the importance of food and how we feed people in communities to understanding that the plants are living, that the land is living, right? Um, in moving to Iowa, and I said I felt pretty Iowan earlier, is because I see the corn, right? And for me, corn was part of my daily bread. As a Chicano woman, we tortillas, right? Um, corn, is, the corn seed is a circle, right? It has feminine principles, and you know, it reminds us of, of the feminine values that are important to Chicano culture as well. And then those two little babies are also my seeds as well. <laughs> Kind of going off of what Ms. Elizabeth said about reclaiming agriculture, when I came here the first time to Iowa State, my major is animal ecology, as I mentioned before. Um, like when you are in classes, they show you like the big industry and like all the technology that we have had throughout the years, and like it makes you I feel like it makes me feel like they belittle my experience of working the land, like working the land, being there not only because of economic growth but also because of other reasons that are more spiritual and like emotional to me, and like just kind of, they always see it in that economic growth, like, oh, you don't know business, business, just because you don't know the big industries and you don't know all the big stuff. So yeah, um, I have a couple of pictures up there. Um, the one on the far left side, superior side, um, it's one of my agriculture groups that I pioneered with a professor in agriculture that we had in high school. And that's the whole group, and we would work with the oxen that you can see there, the bueyes. Um, and we would just, we have to like chop the, the soil before you plant seeds on it because like the seeds need to like make sure that they have space to the roots to expand in the soil. So we would chop the soil when we had to like just do the whole land. We needed the, the bueyes, the oxen for that. Um, and then there's another picture of me doing it with like a, like manually with the, the pala that we would use to chop that land and like, you know, having that effort, like you put that physical effort into it. It's not just a machine that you have doing the work for you, but you do it yourself. And that's something that I learned. Um, then there's like, so like, you can see the hand of my stepfather grabbing uh, some grapes and also under it, there's like something that is very common in Puerto Rico, where that's where I'm from, um, called ajíes dulces. And it's something that is usually produced during the cooler climates that we have. Um, so just to me, that hand represents like the wisdom that comes with knowing the land and just feeling that the land is part of your life 
and just like those products that come after you work the land and like that satisfaction of eating what you produce and what you work for. And just like those lines in their hands of wisdom, of knowledge, of transmitting also that knowledge and those roots to other students and the younger kids. Um, there's also another picture here of another other students just planting stuff and like something that I love about that picture, you cannot see me singing, but like I will tell them to like name the plants and talk beautiful things to them because they, there's, actually an they, there's actually an experiment that they show when you talk and you say little like good things to the plants, they grow better than when you say like mean stuff to them. Maybe you guys have done that research, seen that research. So I would teach them it's good that you name the plants, that we remember their names and that we sing to them. So I would just like when you plant it, touch it, like pat it and go like sing it to it. So they would also do that too. <laughs> and yeah, just other um, pictures, um, poinsettias down there is something very common also in Puerto Rico, especially during the Christmas time. It's very common for us to sell those and everybody usually has like pink, red or white poinsettias in their backyards. So that's something that also like we would grow and like just like sell them and that was also like something that I feel like it's part of my culture in agriculture, so yeah. And I'm Lily Trevino again, and also to talk about agriculture and how I'm connected to it, I was really confused by this question because I'm from the suburbs of Chicago, I know nothing. <laughs> um, I'm trying a horse training class here at Iowa State, it's very interesting, I got kicked twice, so what do I know about agriculture? <laughs> but then I think about it and I'm like, wait, thanks to agriculture, that's how my mom was able to survive. Um, that innate that she was talking about. No one taught them how to survive, no one taught them how to farm, but um, it was um, her family being desperate and, and just teaching themselves how to work the very small land that they had. Um, and then again with the trauma, it's definitely passed on, because they say, um, how do you have all these mental illnesses if you had a good childhood? And you have to remember, it's passed on by your parents through genes. And um, my mom just struggled so much. Again, just trying to sustain herself. She went to second grade. My dad had a high school equivalent, so their main priority was to survive. So being here today is very important to me. I'm very proud to be a Latina student. Um, same what other Latino students said, my parents didn't really understand school. They just kind of hoped that I would learn myself to understand how important school was, and that's how it was. I had a drive as a kid. I knew what I wanted to do, and I knew I wanted a bright future to just honor all the sacrifices and hard work that my parents had to go through. And I really like the quote up there. It's by um, a classical novel called Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. And basically, um, I can't really f read the full quote, but the whole book is about outliers and how the rich, successful people never made it alone. They had special opportunities, such as Bill Gates. He had um, a friend whose mother had a connection to a university. So yes, he was very smart, but he had a connection to a lot of computers. when. So back when Bill Gates was in high school and in college, you know, access to computer and the availabilities weren't really like too popular. So for him to have access to all that computer, all the computers, he taught himself and that's how he was able to be really big because you got to understand economics and back then, if you're like one person who knows a lot about something, you're going to get big. So I kind of relate this to multicultural students and I feel that there's not a lot of help for us, but if we also get those special opportunities, if um, job makers look at us and they see us as potential candidates, that we can also do big things. I'd like to thank all of the uh, presenters, and if we could just get one more round of applause, I'd really appreciate it. Just in, in closing, before we go to lunch, I, I'd just like to make uh, like two really quick points. Um, the first point would be 
there's only a handful of, of faculty who are core faculty in Latino studies, right? And so in my particular case, I'm split between history and Latino studies. I have to teach two, I don't know, half. I mean, I enjoy teaching two courses for history <laughs> and two courses for Latino studies. Um, but usually the two courses for Latino studies are the intro courses because of the demand. And so there's very, actually for me, very limited opportunity to teach let's say my Mexican American history class because I have to teach a multiplicity of, of history courses. And it's the, it's the same for the other faculty as well. And, and, and what that means is that the folks that you see on this panel, they are so very important to us. Um, the, type of, the types of courses that they're offering that are really um, augmenting and beefing up our program are, are really so very important. And that maybe that maybe sounds a little mercenary, right? But I don't I don't mean it like in that way. I mean it in a very in a very real and and a sort of heartfelt uh, way. The other thing that I want to say though is these are really great courses, right? There's a lot. You, I'm out of time. <laughs> There's, there's a lot, what you see here is the, the sort of multidisciplinary and very diverse perspective that, that these course offerings are bringing to um, the program. And I would also like to say the courses are great, right? The faculty are great, but these students, I mean, y'all are awesome. Um, and, I, and I love hearing these stories that come with humor and passion and corazón you know, that, that are very, you know, anytime you have panels where people are laughing and then crying and it's all in there, you're, you know, y'all are doing something right. And, and so we really appreciate the work that you're doing. And I want to thank you all. I know Dr. Suarez and, and Myers and everyone else, we thank you as well. And I think we probably have lunch now. So we'll stop. Thank you.